What's up guys? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. I did a video on descent planning. I would like to follow that up with a video on approach planning, mainly energy management, and three things that I would advocate you do to ensure you're stable at a thousand feet. Now there's many things, but I'm just gonna advocate three here. The first one is I would establish where you wanna have your second flap setting. Most jets have four flap settings before you come into land. Not all, but most. 7.3 is flap 1.5, gear down, flap 15.30. It's almost always flap, flap, gear, flap, flap. 3.20 is the same thing. Flaps 1, flaps 2, gear down, flaps 3, flaps full. So it's always two flaps, gear in between, and then the other two flap settings. Again, not all the time, but generally that's what it is. So I would very much have in mind roughly where do you want to be at your flaps 2 setting, whether that's literally flaps 2 or flaps five in the case of a 7.3. Generally, that's gonna be about 10 miles away from the airport, roughly. Now, apart from that, I would establish at what altitude do you wanna put the gear down and at what altitude do you need to be stable by? Now, the gear down generally is gonna come no later than 2,000 feet above ground level or roughly seven miles. So seven miles, we should be at 2,100 feet. So seven miles away, gear down, or 2,000 feet above Airport elevation, uh, not above ground level, above airport elevation, put the gear down. And then if you do that, you will naturally be stable at 1,000 feet above airport elevation. Now establish where is 1,000 feet above airport elevation. In Denver, it's very different than in Fort Lauderdale. In Bogota, it's very different than in Miami. So you should have an idea as to where do I need to be stable in terms of altitude that I'm gonna see visually on my altimeter. Now right here, I'm gonna put an approach chart as an example of let's say any airport, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, whatever. Let's put Fort Lauderdale. I could see there that it's essentially a sea level airport. And what I'm looking to do is to be at my flaps two setting roughly 10 miles away. So roughly 10 miles away is gonna be blame, this fix blame, as you can see there. So 10 mile, or roughly 10 miles or at this fix, I'm gonna find a waypoint that I can tie. Why? Because mainly what I'm gonna see on my navigation display is the waypoint. So by that waypoint, I know roughly I wanna be at my second flap setting at a minimum. Yes, what if there's air traffic control that's holding you to 210 to 10 and 170 to five? I know, I know, but you need a reference point to know whether you're ahead or behind on the profile that you would ideally like to be at. So work with me on that, all right? So flaps two, roughly at blame. I'm gonna put the gear down no later than I'm just gonna round up to say the airport elevation is 100 feet. I always round up to be more conservative. So gear down no later than 2,100 feet. That'll fall roughly about seven miles away. And I'm gonna be stable at 1,100 feet. Hopefully these tips help you. There are many other things that have to do with automation. Should you get down with thrust idle open descent or should you get down with vertical speed or should you leave it managed? Should we activate the approach phase? Should we not? Um, these are all things that have to do with automation and a lot of times I think yes it's helpful to know hey I want to be stable at a thousand feet of vertical elevation but how do I get there and then being able to utilize the automation to properly put yourself in a position to get there understanding the how piece this is what I'm trying to accomplish how do I actually accomplish that so very much look forward to working with you here in Miami on a type rating maybe some kind of in-person training you would like to accomplish maybe we go into sim and we work on energy management I can tell with you folks that when I remember I came from a Metroliner so early on in my jet flying experience, I struggled with energy management because I was not used to having a very streamlined machine. I was used to having big props with tons of drag and the ability to slow down on a dime, you know. So this was one of the areas that I uh, initially did struggle with in my jet flying. Um, and many of the programs that I put out, I put out because I figure if I struggle with it, probably somebody else has as well. So hopefully this helps you. And hopefully we can be of more help for you here with one of our programs, whether in Miami or in person. All right. We'll see you here at OneStepPrep.com. Want to enjoy your friends and training program success.